engine and trans are in the car. In this video, we're going to go over everything we had to do to make it work. That includes the fabrication of the engine mounts, the fabrication of the trans mount, and all of the cuts and modifications to the chassis itself. Modifications to the chassis included removing these side plates, which he uses to mount the engine. We're going to redesign them as an L, and then also removing this plate in order to get these taken out, where these will also be cut straight here and here. The other modification of the chassis was removing this wiring loom tab. This was welded straight onto this piece, but as you can see, it interferes with the axle flange. Um, once we get the axles, we might actually have to cut this straight, but at this time, there's no need to remove the extra material. As far as refitting the wiring loom, I am going to put that up top right here, and I will just put it on the inside of the axle there. The next video in this series is going to be on fabricating the twin turbo hot side setup. I've got everything on order, but we're still waiting on quite a few parts, but to go over the design with you, we're going to have a log style manifold that goes up and forward. So from the primary, it's going to go up and forward slightly to a two and a half inch log that will come out at a 45 and go down into the turbo. The hot side from there will kick out from here, go into the muffler and out the back. The wastegate will be positioned right here. It will have primary since it's straight uh, from the exhaust off that 45 degree flange. And then we'll have the exit from the wastegate kick right back down into the exhaust. For the cold side piping, it'll basically be a filter right here, and then we're going to kick it out and up. It'll follow this exact same body line above the exhaust of two and a half inch to get to the inner core that's right on the other side of the motor. So the hot side piping is going to continue at the angles of these frame rails. Uh, on this side, we can't have it come out here because this is actually the shifter mechanism that would interfere. So on the passenger side, we're going to come in, come over a little bit, out here, around the top, and exit. On the driver's side, we're going to continue again at the same body line angle. Come straight back here, down, and out. For the cold side setup, we've got a dual inlet intercooler coming. So the, the cold side will mirror these images. Then you will have the inlets right here with a single outlet right in the middle. It'll sit right up in this section. So the cold will come in here, come out here, right into the manifold. One question that I have for you guys, if you'd like to give me some advice, we are running this exhaust in this area. We can run true duals, we can run an H pipe, or we can run an X pipe. What do you guys think would be best for the twin turbos? Okay, so in this video, the first one I'm actually working on the car, we're going to cut out some of the braces. Uh, as we discussed in the last video with the LS engine, uh, a couple of these braces right here just need to be modified. Uh, to work with the accessories, uh, these will need to get cut here and here. Uh, I was actually planning on just cutting the ones I already had, but Charlie was nice enough to design me some in the CAD, and then he's going to be bringing me some new ones in a couple weeks. So sometimes the hardest part is waiting, right? Uh, we're also going to be removing these braces, which will again also need to get cut. Um, so with these, if you run a small block Chevy, these mount holes right here are designed to actually use this engine mount plate. Um, obviously, we're using standard style mounts, and we're using an LS, so those are unneeded. Uh, so in order to clear the accessory, same kind of story. This is going to get cut here, and then like an L right here. All right, guys, enough talking. Let's get to work and put the motor and trans in the chassis.
threw back on the alternator. I did not throw back on the AC compressor because the AC that we're going to be using isn't compatible with the C6 AC compressor. Um, I believe it's an old Air Products compressor and then I had to get a custom bracket. But I'm going to leave the OEM one on there right now just so I kind of know right where it's going to sit uh, for when we're positioning it in the car. So because the chassis is designed to use bell housing plates to adapt the engine and the trans, and those also function as the motor mounts. Uh, and we are using standard style mounts with the LS instead of that small block Chevy combo. We've had to re-engineer the uh, engine mounts. The way that we're going to do that is by taking some of this aluminum and mounting them to the rails. So if you look here, here's the lower rail. And we're going to cut a notch into a piece of 1x4 aluminum 8th inch wall. And then we're going to cut it at a diagonal with a bolt going through the top. The mounts for the C6 Corvette are directly horizontal. So we will be able to, once we cheat this in and up, mount it directly on here, slap the bolt through the top, it'll be good. So now we've got this drawing all sketched out to use as little material as possible. Uh, the red's going to be the waist, but you can see this is our height right here. We're going to be raising it one and three quarter inches. The reason why is the oil pan needed one and five eighths in order to clear the lower frame rail, or I'm sorry, in order to, to be above the lower frame rail. So that way the oil pan isn't the first thing that contacts the ground. Uh, so we're going to mirror that over and make our cuts and then drill our holes. So now with these rough cut by hand, you can get a good idea. Let's pretend this is the frame rail, even though this is a one and a half by four and the frame rails are one and a half by three. But you're gonna sit there notched on the frame rails and then we're gonna drill a hole in the top and that'll give us access on the bottom. tacked into the chassis, uh, then we lowered the engine onto the mounts and I marked where the holes were for the center location. We had the engine shifted ever so slightly forward when we marked them, but the critical thing was the width. Uh, the mounts are in the correct position, everything is square, everything is uh, measured from the frame rail and from the uh, vertical here. Went ahead and marked this to the center, made a center punch hole. Guys, we have day one of trying to put the engine and trans in. We've made a lot of progress, uh, but we did run into another little issue. So, without further ado, we got the engine in. Uh, we have the mount made. That's made out of a one by four eighth inch wall aluminum. It is in place. There's no nuts on it right now, but it is tacked in on both sides. And then we tried to put the trans in. Well, we realized that there's not a way to actually slide this trans in from the back. So we ended up having to pull the engine, raise the chassis up, slide the transmission under the chassis, lower the chassis onto the trans with it slid back just a little bit, then put the motor in. Okay? So then at that point, we went to try to bolt the engine to the trans. As you can see, the angle here is not completely right. But that's because we're not quite in place. This transmission is offset to the passenger side. This is the Graziano Audi Lamborghini trans. So if you look at the center line here, as compared to the bell housing and the motor, it's actually offset on purpose. And so what the issue we ran into was is where Charlie's brake lines are designed to go, come through these ports and then come through here. The flange for the axle is actually interfering with this bracket. So what we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to cut this bracket up just a little bit because this has got to go up, rough guess, probably about an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch, but probably about an eighth, at which point in time we'll be able to go ahead and attach the engine and trans.
What I'm planning on doing for the trans mount is utilizing the factory R8 mounts. What I'm planning on doing is utilizing, this is the mount plate Charlie usually, usually uses, and this comes over the trans like a big plate similar to the engine, the trans adapter. What I'm planning on doing is basically having a piece right here that utilizes these bolts, comes under, and use some of this bushing material on either side. I did just want to mention that I am going to try to shoot the majority of the work that gets done to this car. The reason that I've been unable to show the lowering of the motor, the raising of the chassis, you know, trying to put these big components in space is because it's just myself in the garage and one lucky or unlucky lady, I guess, depending on how you want to look at it. And when she's giving me a hand, kind of, you know, when I'm lowering the motor, giving me a set of eyes, you know, forward, backward, what kind of angle we need to be at, it's just difficult. There's no way for me to do the camera work on that. One thing that I told you in the original video that I'm really excited about is look at how almost perfect the angle for the axle is going out into the hub. Alright guys, the metal to make the engine mounts showed up this afternoon and for only a few hours we got a lot done. The engine mounts are completed, they're tacked in, the bolts through, uh, the transmission is exactly where it needs to be, the engine and trans are together, so everything is in its final resting location. Unfortunately, YouTube cuts you off at 15 minutes if you don't have a thousand subscribers, so we're going to break this up in a two-part video. In the first part, we made the engine mounts, and the second part, we're going to make the trans mount and get all the drivetrain installed like you see here. So head on over to that second video, and I'll see you there.